Ready Check Radio. Stand by as we get ready to serve up all your news this week in the world of gaming. Welcome to Gaming Gumbo. Hello, 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 Internet. It's Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern. That means here on Ready Check Radio, it's time for Gaming Gumbo, your weekly gaming wrap-up show. I'm your host, Mike Byrne, a.k.a. Magic Man. As always, we've got a lot of fun stuff to talk about, including making mm, un, just like unmerciless fun of Ubisoft because they just don't know. I, I shouldn't say they. Their leadership has no clue. They just have no clue. And I know that's not exclusive to AAA gaming companies, just Ubisoft. There's plenty more that have it, but we've got a lot to talk about. Thank you so much for joining us, whether it's on YouTube or uh, listening on iTunes, Spotify, any of those podcast platforms. If you get a chance, head on over to readycheckradio.com. Go always use more Twitter followers, Twitch followers, YouTube subscribers, all that stuff, and that's where you come in. Click those buttons. You know what ones to click. Subscribe, notifications, comment. Let us know your thoughts on some of today's topics. And we thank you for the support. Joining me to go over all kinds of fun stuff, Mr. Troy Blackburn. What's up, New Fridge? Hey, I'm looking at my camera realizing that I need to shave really badly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pre-show we were talking about the old facial hair. So you never know. Twitch chat joining us. You never know what we're going to talk about pre- or post-show. Also with some facial hair, Mr. Yod, resident artist of Ready Check Radio. What's up, sir? Uh, you know, every once in a while you gotta tweeze the sides to get all the hairs out. <laughs> you so do, all, all do you twenty of them that you can count? Can I can I yeah. ask you this actually? Because like but, you, obviously Asian descent, we've talked right. about your your lineage and your parentage and your the languages you can speak and read and all that stuff. Right, like right. that is a very distinct Eastern facial hairstyle. Do you do that intentionally, or is that like no, the way not. it just no, happens to grow? This is all I can grow other than, as New Fridge said, about 20 hairs on each side that I tweeze out. I don't even shave them. I just tweeze them. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess it works out. Like, you, you could yeah. have been of, like, Asian descent, and all of a sudden you have a beard like Troy's, which is, like, very right, Midwestern, right. Southern United States. <laughs> so I guess if you had to just, like, well, that's the way it's got to go, at least it fell the right, right way for you. <laughs> right. <laughs> this, it this is it. This, this is all of it. Oh, Ubisoft. So yeah. Ubisoft, yeah. I mean, I, I guess it's uh, standard for large companies, like upper echelon, to not understand what's going on in the real world. Yeah, I mean, we're not even going to get into... <laughs> this was, like, obviously the week of financials. Like, NCSoft dropped theirs, Nexon dropped theirs, Square uh, Enix was the week before, Ubisoft... Hasbro, it, yeah, Hasbro uh, Wizard did, too. Yeah, they did, too. Like, any of the publicly traded companies are reporting their Q4 stuff, uh, and you know, Blizzard did theirs, and... We're not going to talk about all of those. If you want more details on those, check out the Always Online podcast on MMOBomb.com, where yesterday Troy, Q, and I opined on all of them. But I did, because Skull and Bones is just like a mainstay of this show, <laughs> I figured, Troy, we kind of just like barely touched on it and made a little bit of fun of it yesterday. So here you can go hog wild. There's extra time. We're not going to talk about Blizz and Square. And we're just going to talk about Ubisoft. Obviously, we knew their financials were going to be a mess, right? They had had that emergency <laughs> investors call like four weeks prior to even releasing their financials where they had canceled a bunch of projects, uh, lowered expectations for investors and everything. Well, they actually had to do the financial presentation still. Like just because <laughs> you hold that call doesn't mean you don't have to hold an investor's call. And they did that this week. And they reported predictably that they were down and they were lowering expectations, something they already set the stage for in that emergency investor's call. But one savvy investor asked a question, uh, and I don't even think it requires you being that savvy. Like <laughs> <laughs> um, that oh, dared kidding. to be uh, dared itself to be answered, just mm. dared itself to be answered. And they kind of said, Hey, I'm seeing all the press about Skull and Bones. I already know how long it's been in development, how many times it's like six times been delayed and all that stuff. But I'm also reading press that is just not very positive on the the potential of the game. What are you going to do to ensure that a game that was in that long development hell, that long gestation, 
how on earth can you push for that game to be profitable? Reasonable question, right, Troy? I mean, that's an investor wants to know. Big project. You spent a lot of money on it. Lots of years. Lots of delays. You built a whole Singapore studio on the damn thing. You're how canceling you, everything else. You're canceling everything else. <laughs> <laughs> how do you make it profitable? Well, here's the answer. The CFO, uh, Frederick Duguay, said, uh, hey, we've been very happy with the play test that we've seen in early January. So we have, have a... We, 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 maybe they are. I don't know. We have a very strong, improved version to show players that they haven't seen yet. So this is really what we're going to leverage next month to drive more momentum for, of the game. So anticipate next month potentially seeing some more of this. But I, I kind of latched on, everybody else did too, that we have a very strong, improved version of the game. <laughs> so Ubisoft, right, Yad, they basically pulled the you haven't even seen my final form yet. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of looking for some booze over here. I think I need a hit. <laughs> <laughs> we have a very strong, improved version um, that players haven't seen at all. No, Mom, I totally did my homework, Troy. You just didn't <laughs> see me do it. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. we've we've been uh, we've been working on the cash shop immensely over the past couple of months, and uh, we think it's absolutely fantastic. Can't wait for you guys to see it. Havoc says, but what if it's dope? <laughs> what if it's dope? I mean, they, they've got this entire private NDA group of people, fans, people, you know, customers that they're play testing this thing on. But not this version, not the improved version, apparently. Right, not the improved apparently. version, which which right. maybe think, those insiders did see in January. It kind of alludes to you know those maybe. insiders maybe saw it, maybe saw it in so January. So all the press that come out after January. What it could it possibly be? like? What could it possibly be though? That's very strong and improved. This game was supposed to be released multiple times already, which means there yeah. were various points where they said we're ready to go gold and print. You know, we're ready to start printing the discs. Troy, what could you possibly... It's not like you're going to be adding big new systems and things that people weren't ready for and weren't expecting you to do. Like, maybe you polish the graphics and the performance a bit. Sure. Maybe you do some bug squashing. Also sure. But a new, very strong, improved version. See, I see them doing a little more off ship. I still think it's going to be shallow as all get out. I don't think they've got time to do any kind of real deep off ship stuff. But uh, but from all the reports from the previous version, apparently that the folks had seen before January, uh, that was all just an illusion, something to sell cosmetics, <laughs> the off ship stuff. And so I can see them like like you go into a port, you actually get off your boat to talk to somebody, and then you just get right back on your boat and go back to boating and running into coconut trees to. Harvest well, we coconuts. have already seen that too, uh, yeah. where you're yeah. like in the little port cities picking up quests and stuff. So even that wouldn't be like new. Maybe they yeah, I can see them expanding on, on that. Bit. Yeah, I still think it's going to be super shallow, but I think that's what they're going to expand on, or that's what they should expand on. Obviously, we're not hearing a lot, Yod, from internal testers because they're yeah. part of that group. It's all under NDAs, and we would expect right. them to, and we would make sure, you know, hope that they would uh, respect those NDAs. But what we are hearing isn't coming from beta leaks or testing leaks no. and stuff. It's from yeah. devs on the game speaking to various right. sites anonymously yeah. or devs that had worked on it and left speaking anonymously. It's from it's the good. inside that we're hearing this ain't going to be grand. Yeah, yeah. And and I mean at, at this point in time your your company has to get this game out, right? It's got to ship. It, it it's required that this title yep. ships for you to retain all the little the tax know, perks. And, yeah, the tax perks, all, all the little cuts and this and that that allowed you to create the studio. It has to ship. So are just just ship it already. I mean, <laughs> like, yeah, it's, point, you, you cut it the can losses. be bad now or it can be bad later. Yeah, yeah cut the losses right? at this point. Just, just right. And it. I know just I know the, the quote is always attributed to Shigeru Miyamoto. You know, dubiously, maybe he said it, maybe he didn't, you know, but a delayed game has a chance to be good. A rushed game that's bad is always bad. Uh, yeah, but, but I don't think this game even applies. Like, no, <laughs> it's no, gonna, it's, no. This, this thing's gonna be sunk at sea the moment it ships. Ah, he did it. He <laughs> said it. And it's sad. Like, there is so little good pirate stuff uh, out there. 
Right. Like, sea of Thieves has d- done a remarkable turnaround, and you would expect them to do that. It's rare, right? Like they're a, mm-hmm. they're not Ubisoft. Uh, <laughs> just like the, if this was in the hands of a different company, Troy, and I don't, I'm not asking you to name a company, but if this was mm-hmm. a hand in the hands of maybe like a rare, where you're like, this is really rocky at launch, but okay, you know, I'm not going to buy in now, but I am going to keep my eye on it, which is exactly what happened to Sea of Thieves for a lot of people. Initial reviews were not great. They waited. They got it on a discount or some type of sale later. And now they have a, a decent product they're happy with. The art style doesn't do it for me personally. That's why I never got super invested in it. But kudos to Rare for fixing it. I, there is no faith in Ubisoft, right? Like, you don't look at Ubisoft as a company that does a, a, a cyberpunk, right? Where CD Projekt Red took a bloodbath, but you were like, it is CD <laughs> Projekt Red. Let's see how they handle their really big first bloodbath. Okay. Right. All right. It wasn't ideal. It took you a while to get there, but you got there. I don't think anybody has that faith in Ubisoft right now, right? Because uh, even like uh, Assassin's Creed Unity, when that came out, is such a mess. Uh, you know, they made a bunch of fixes and stuff to it, but not to any sort of fanfare where anybody was like, oh, it's a great game now. People are like, okay, if you play it nowadays, it's playable at least. Uh, but they've never really had anything come out like that where it's, you know, really short of expectations and really had a major comeback. And I don't expect them to, I expect them to put it out and just kind of move on. Yeah. And, and you know what's yeah. sad is Ubisoft Yacht has such a pool of talented developers and talented artists i like certain ubisoft products i like Mm -hmm. the division and the division 2 i've said many times not at launch but i did end up liking them later as they got a little more fleshed out and ubisoft has that tendency of day one it's not great but hopefully maybe we'll see there's just not that faith that they're going to do it because they have let they they did it with division 2 but they have just let other titles die Right. Riders right, Republic but- is a good game. You know, there there are so many things Ubisoft's teams do right that you have to look at Ubisoft and go, it this is one hundred percent a leadership problem. It is. It is. And it's it's like they they don't seem to want to make their games better their leadership at least doesn't want to make their games better. They want, want to make excuses on why it's not good and just let you try to accept that and move along like the whole thing once again with unity and the issues that were there with unity um the the whole thing with well why don't you make female characters oh because it's hard to code female (laughs) characters right (laughs) (laughs) and all that kind of shit it's excuse after excuse rather than going oh i'm sorry my yeah, bad. I mean, breast, me breast animations are tough, I guess. <laughs> I have jiggle physics. Ubisoft couldn't get it down, and they were just, just like, talk no. To Japan. Talk to, talk to the um, Dead or Alive, that, that one game back in the day. They, they had the jiggle counter. They can fix it for you. Yeah. <laughs> just so, like, and, and hell, I've said it many times. If the game comes out, and it even if it's even mediocre, I will apologize for bashing the, bashing it the way I have. <laughs> right. If it's like mediocre, I think is a good target right now for for Skull and Bones. Uh, but uh, I don't expect to have to give that apology. But I'll be more than happy mm-hmm. to give it if it happens. Yeah. Uh, it's also, one of those where I, I don't want to buy it, but I think I'm going to just to watch the train wreck. <laughs> oh well, you know they ain't sending us codes. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I get codes for most Ubisoft things for for MMO bomb. Uh, there's no way in hell they're sending me a skull and bones <laughs> code. Not the watch, the watch w- them do it. Watch them do it. <laughs> the way I have abused that I bet, SEO I bet they don't value. Still codes before launch day at all. I bet money. Yeah, that's bet, another bet thing. Those, yeah, I bet that's one of those where you get your review code the day of launch or something. Mm, yeah. Oh yeah. god. Yeah, they they don't want those reviews out ahead of time. Mm-mm. Because like, like I said, at this point, just cut. The ship loose and let it go. Yeah, just we saw just that let anchor it go. off. Yep. Let it go. Let it go. Just let it go. Just let, let it go. go. It's, it's going to be bad. Just let it go. You, you're we'll not going to make a profit off of it. It's not going to be mean, big the, splash. The thing is, too, you've taken so much, you've put so much money into this by now. Just, it's one of those, like, <laughs> another pirate pun here, right? Sunken. <laughs> uh, the sunken cost fallacy, right? right. Where it's like, okay, mm-hmm. well, you, we've put so much into it. What's another? two million what's another three million because then my 18 million that i've already put into it is wasted well that's a sunken cost fallacy 
put it out, get some of your money back, and you know what? Just pull a, a Warner Brothers and you know chalk the tax loss, right? Like they did with the right. Wonder Woman movie or whatever it was. No, yeah, I or the was Bat Woman was it Batwoman? I I don't know. I what? No, what? Batwoman was never released. It was never even released. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The one that they were just like, it's done, but we're not releasing it. You know, they're just gonna yeah, take a bloodbath on the loss. That's Batgirl. That's Batgirl. Batgirl. Yeah. That's it. Batgirl. Yeah, Batgirl. And so they're yeah. just gonna you know it's a tax write off at that point. You know, yeah, it's it is, it's losses, but. You're a publicly traded company, and that hurts when you do that type of stuff. Also on this call, though, it is important to note that CEO Yves Guimot, uh <laughs> was asked about E3, right? E3 is supposed to happen this year. It is supposed to be a both a digital and physical affair. We already knew Nintendo wasn't going to be there. They haven't been there for, for years anyway. They just kind of do their Nintendo Direct alongside the event usually. Uh, but reports are now that Sony and Microsoft aren't planning to be there either. Microsoft planning its own showcase. Rumors are that there's going to be a PlayStation showcase sometime in the next three or four weeks here. Rumors are also swirling that by tracking Sony's private jet, people are assuming that Microsoft and Sony must be having discussions about the whole Activision Blizzard thing that Sony is vehemently opposing in the United States and in uh, Europe because the Sony jet has apparently flown to our West Coast after attending some other meetings elsewhere. So lots of fun rumor stuff the, going around on that. But Yves Guimot said, if E3 happens, we will be there and we will have a lot of things to show. What those things are, I, I don't know. You know, a couple of Assassin's Creed things, maybe Skull and Bones. They do have like the the, the mobile uh, division stuff and Rainbow uh, Rainbow Six stuff, uh, mobile in the works. So they, they do have some stuff to show. What's interesting there is if E3 happens, and immediately when I read this and put the article up, I was like, the ESA is going to hate that he said that. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> they are going to hate that he said that. And almost like the next day, um, the uh, the group behind it, both the ESA and Reed Pop, who is helping the ESA like kind of rebrand and redo E3 uh, to make it a little more relevant to today's presentational methods, uh, they came out and said E3 is full speed ahead. <laughs> like it's not an if it happens. E3 is full speed ahead. Thank you very much, Yves Gimo. But right. you're not going to have Nintendo. You're not going to have Sony. You're not going to have Microsoft. Uh, if like Ubisoft is one of your bigger ones, there, oof. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe they'll show that awesome new build of Skull and Bones. <laughs> yeah, that very improved version. <laughs> that is the highlight of E3: the new, <laughs> the new build of Skull and Bones flagship presentation. <laughs> Ooh, flagship, nice. <laughs> so. Having worked in games journalism for as long as I have, and Troy, you dabbled in it as long as you have, and Yod, you being in like the artist side of games journalism, so you've been tracking headlines for years and things like this. I gotta say, I, I hate the articles that are always like, this game lost 90% of its player base in the this X period. And it's like, okay, come on. Multiverses right. is getting pummeled for that right now, that it's lost like 99% of its user base well okay if you go by steam charts yes but that is a cross-platform game like stop it it's, it's such a clickbaity thing i also hate that really bad comparisons in headlines mm. really yeah. bad comparisons and as much as i love video games chronicle i think that that's one of the better sites out there for just general gaming news if you're not looking for something you know, focused on like MMO bomb being multiplayer. If you just want general, I like Video Games Chronicles and their staff an awful lot. I hate this headline that they put up this week. Yep. Hogwarts Legacy UK, and we're again, we're just talking about the UK here with all the numbers we're about to talk about. UK, UK, not world, UK. Hogwarts Legacy's UK first week sales are 80% higher than Elden Ring's. No shit. Yeah. You're telling me a popular game that seemed to be doing everything right during development based on one of the most profitable IPs of all time did better than a new Souls-like open world game that already caters to a more niche audience to begin with. <laughs> 
That's what I was going to say. Elden, Elden Ring, Elden Ring, and all the games like that. Even as popular as Elden Ring was, that is still a very niche gameplay it is. genre. That's not even taking to into account that the Harry Potter franchise was born in the UK. <laughs> 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 like, it's the biggest week for any Harry Potter game in the UK. Game Industry Biz initially reporting and Video Games Chronicles uh, uh, elaborating on that it has been comfortably the best-selling game last week in the UK, uh, and that compared to the last major fantasy game release, Elden Ring, week one sales were 80% higher. What I do find interesting... And what I think might have made a better, more interesting headline, too, is this next little piece of information, which honestly might not help Sony's case <laughs> in the UK <laughs> fighting against the Activision purchase. 82% of copies, 82% were purchased on the PS5 and 18% on the Xbox Series X, Troy. That's a Big number to me. That is a huge difference. It is, but it's also the physical media number. Oh, well, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, is it the physical? Oh, yeah, because that does not include yeah. digital sales. Yeah. Right, right, because they do talk about the fact that the Xbox Series S, the digital only, is the more popular option of Xbox players. Yeah, but I still think the PlayStation 5 outsells it in the UK, as far as the hardware itself. Oh, yes. Obviously, and if you're going to have a higher percentage of hardware sales, then you're going to have a higher percentage of software sales. Don't don't compare Obviously. Hogwarts Legacy's sales to <laughs> Elden Rings. No, that that is different. That's completely different mm. animal. Hogwarts Legacy crushed Overcooked 2's initial week sales by seven thousand four hundred and twenty four percent. Oh, imagine that! Imagine that. Hey, I, I do think, feel like while we're on the topic of, of Hogwarts uh, and, and things like that, uh, obviously there's a lot of... It's not on Game Pass, no. Um, <laughs> I don't think it is. I'd be stunned if it was. I don't, I don't think it is either. You checking? Yeah, I'm checking. No, okay. it's not. It's not. <laughs> I would be stunned yeah. if it was. There's no yeah, way I, I, they I, were I, that Warner Brothers yeah. would be like, yeah, let's give it away yeah. for free. No. Um, Warner... Warner needs money right now, like yeah, bad. They're in a bad <laughs> spot. Um, obviously, I, I, I don't. I, I feel I would feel remiss if we left this topic, but I don't want to spend a ton of time on it. So give give everybody a chance for their opinions here. There's huge controversy surrounding the game on, you know, whether you should buy it, whether you should support it, whether you should watch streamers that do it, you know, whether people should stream it at all. Uh, and a lot of people, you know, dropping from the fan base of their favorite streamers because they opted to buy Hogwarts Legacy and stream it. And they're just like, nope, that's a no go. A lot of this, uh, most of it stemming from, of course, J.K. Rowling's own personal feelings on transgender individuals, lesbian, gays, all, all the, uh, the different communities there and the very public things that she has uh, said in a derogatory way about all of those different groups and the rights that she feels they should or should not have. Um, right. So I wanted to get your opinion on like boycotts and things like that. Obviously we say a lot, vote with your wallet, Troy, right? Yeah. Vote with your wallet. There is a, an exactly 0% chance that Hogwarts legacy, no matter what you do, is going to be a 10 million plus copy seller. It's absolutely zero to me, though. Yeah, it's going to make the 10 million units number uh, at some point. It's it's just going to. So you voting with your wallet doesn't do anything in that scenario unless there's an overwhelming majority of you. Does that mean you just cave because you are a Harry Potter fan? And and while J.K. Rowling had nothing to do or very little to do reportedly with the creation or the story or anything of the game, she obviously is going to benefit financially from a licensing deal for this type mm. of thing. Like, yeah. what do you do in those in these types of situations? For me, it's easier to look at a company, right? Activision Blizzard and the way they behaved has personally led me to boycott their titles when I talk to internal employees and got a sense that things were uh, headed in the right direction. I did sub to World of Warcraft for one month. New stories broke. 
<laughs> and immediately <laughs> I was like, okay, it doesn't matter now again what my my friends internally are telling me. No. Uh, and so my boycott there has continued. But when you start talking about like tertiary relationships like this, where Rowling didn't have much to do with the creation of the game. It is her franchise. She is going to make money off of it. You love that franchise. Like It starts to create a really gray area for me. It's easy for me to not support this game. And, and as much as I don't like J.K. Rowling's perspective on any of that stuff, and I vehemently disagree with her, it has nothing to do with that. I don't care about Harry Potter. So this one's easy for me. Mm -hmm. But where do you go when, or what's, what's your kind of thought process when you start getting these, well, she didn't have anything to do with it, but if I buy it, she is going to benefit from, like, what do you start doing when the area gets gray there between art and the artist? That's what I was going to say, the ability to separate the art from the artist, because I, I, you know, you can consider me a bit of a hypocrite if you want to. I boycott Blizzard Activision because of the way they, they're treating their employees um, I try to vote with my wallet. Does it mean anything? Blizzard's too mainstream. World of Warcraft's too mainstream. Does it mean anything at the end of the day? No, not really. They're still making their money. Uh, Activision's still making its money. Um, but also, you know, I love Michael Jackson's music. Was he a great human being? Probably not. Um, I enjoy HP Lovecraft's lore. Uh, was he a great human being? Definitely not. Uh, you know, he was a known racist yeah. and a bigot. So... You know, the ability to separate the art from the artist, it's its its subjective, man. And it's its a lot of people with a lot of opinion. You go with uh, something as mainstream as the Harry Potter franchise, you've got a lot of people who just think Harry Potter and don't think about J.K. Rowling whenever they think about that. They just love the Harry Potter universe and everything Harry Potter, and it's so mainstream. Like you said, the ones who have the opinion that, they, that everything should be boycotted, there's not enough to really affect the overall sales of a game like this or to really affect much because there are so many people who are in love with the franchise itself uh, that, that they either don't know or don't care uh, what's going on with the author. They're separating the art from the artist. I also think there's uh, something to be said, Yod, for groups of us that are as ingrained in the information flow uh, of yeah. this particular topic as we are, right? Like, you can be an absolute World of Warcraft nut. And just that has been your game for decades and you just play it all the time with your buddies and you can literally live that and have no clue what's going on with Blizzard and Activision oh, and yeah. because you don't follow gaming news. You, you don't. Right. That's not what you enjoy. You don't read right. World of Warcraft news. You don't read Blizzard news. You don't go to gaming websites. You play WoW with your friends and you have for 20 years and that's just the way it is. And there's a huge, Troy, Troy, I see you nodding. There's a huge portion of the Harry Potter fan base that has no clue about J.K. Rowling's political or or other feelings. And just you, uh, until somebody says something to them. Uh, Yod, where do you kind of, you are an artist, right? I mean, I, I am, yeah, I am. I am an, well, obviously, I, I am an artist. Um, the thing that I look at, though, is, I mean, per, okay, so personal, on a personal level, I don't care for the series, so that's, yeah. purchasing it is not a thing here or there for me i'm not gonna buy it because i don't care for the series so that's not a dilemma for me um the whole art and artist thing is a big thing however and i don't agree with the things she said on your hand if you are a fan of the series like you said a lot of people are like you know really into the lore and reading the story and stuff like that and they just don't understand how uh, it's it's not really I don't think it's really a ignorance thing. It's just a more of a uh, you're into the subject matter, so you're researching the subject matter and how that subject matter gets to you is just not in your frame of reference. Yeah, yeah. So, and I've I, I kind of taken the same stance on this one as I have with Blizzard. I'm personally boycotting Blizzard, right, for right, very specific right. reasons. But I don't look at somebody playing WoW or a friend of mine streaming WoW as a slap in the face to me or to the employees of Blizzard because, one, they may not be aware of it at all. Uh, two, mm -hmm. they could be taking the counter off, uh, the counter option, which is if it doesn't sell, then the people that make great things like this are going to be the first ones to suffer. Mm -hmm. I, I don't personally buy into that argument for a lot of other reasons that we could probably have a debate on and an interesting chat over. I think there's uh, fallacies in that argument but right. I, I you know so i don't if you want to buy hogwarts 
God bless you. Have fun. I hope it's everything you want it to be. I'm not going to buy it. Uh, I'm just like, I'm not going to buy Diablo, even though that's headed into early access and open beta yeah. at the end of next month. It's just not going to happen. Uh, well, the, the other thought, one, one other thought I wanted to put out there, though, is if you are very much against giving her money directly, and it is kind of a gray area back alley way to do it. Buy it used. But, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to say. Yep. Exactly. Someone else already gave her the money, but your money personally will not go to her because you are buying it used. Yeah, so but then it's going well, to GameStop, which is not as fucking right, better. Right, right. That's a whole different <laughs> monkey in the box, though. So, <laughs> and we're just talking about J.K. Rowling in this case. So, right. yeah, your money's not going directly to her because there's no subscription. Right. So it's not like, you know, playing the game will consistently give her... Like, my, I got, my mom bought it. My mom bought it. I mean, she's getting it on the PS4 because she doesn't have a PS5, and that one, the port got delayed until April. She's buying it. I, she, you know, whether she's aware or not of anything going on, I don't know, with J.K. Yeah. Rowling or not. Like, she's just a Harry Potter nut, you know? I don't, I don't hold it right. against my mom that I opted not to buy a game, even if I was interested in it. I wouldn't buy it. And she did buy it. Like, Okay. You know, I, I don't know the situation there. I'll tell you the situation if you want to know about it, and if it doesn't change anything, okay, I still don't blame you. I, yep. I get it. I get it. You know, life is so full of shit for most of us, like, all the time that it's like, I like a Harry Potter game. So sue me. Like, yep. that's my I escape. Mean, <laughs> and I'm not going to deny anybody the, their escape for whatever reason. Yeah, none of the money the streamers are making is going to J.K. Rowling either. That's, you know... It's a streaming thing. They they don't get any yeah. money out of that. Let us know how you feel in the comments below. Like, obviously, none of us are huge fans, so we don't have a real horse in this particular race. But we are boycotting other things, whether they be individuals or companies, on similar or, you know, almost the same ground. So do you right. agree? Do you boycott? Or is it just, you know what? I'm going to buy what I want to buy when I want to relax. And you know what? The, the rest of the world's crap so often that I want these few hours to not be crap and I'm just going to do my thing, which is a totally I, valid standpoint. I think, I you know, may there are people that just like, I don't want politics in my games. I'm going to buy my game. I'm going to play it. Right. Any, yeah. Anybody playing wild hearts? That's a big, uh, big game this week. Big game. No, not, not, not typically <laughs> my cup of tea. Yeah. Oh, you're not into like uh, 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 monster hunter and stuff like that. No, not typically. I was just going to say, Super Asian Steampunk <laughs> Monster Hunter? <laughs> yeah, some people are like, obviously, it's a, kind of a, a Monster Hunter vein. Go out, yeah. fight the big baddie, come back and craft yeah. and stuff. But there's like a lot of reviews that are like the, the weapons and the crafting of those weapons and traps and being able to do it on the fly and stuff. Although, yes, it is a Monster Hunter type game. That aspect is so different and cool that it's 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 doing pretty well on the scores. 23 critics on the PC version give it a 78. We're going to circle back to the PC version in just a second. Uh, user scores have just been opened up today because of when it released. They're already at an 8.8 .8 on the PC, according to Metacritic. Not so hot if you actually go to Steam, though. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was shocking. When, I, when, you, when you link that, I'm when you talk about, my God. <laughs> on the Steam review right now, and keep in mind this just came out 48 hours ago, mm -hmm. 3,149 reviews for all time, and it's in the mostly negative category. It is getting mm. lamb mm -mm -mm. basted on Steam for performance issues. Troy, what, what do you got to say on this? Because it's like. <laughs> This is the gaming world we freaking live in. Like everything comes out day one, it's broken. <laughs> like <laughs> there's even some folks in the reviews giving it a positive review now because they say it'll be fixed next week. Mm. There, there are people who let it slide because they know it's going to be fixed next week, regardless of how it is right now when they're reviewing the game. Yeah, because they said the devs acknowledge the PC port runs terribly. They're putting a fix in there next week. They're reporting that Omega Force are working continuously to improve performance and optimize the game for a wide variety of hardware specs across future updates. We have a patch coming next week that addresses a CPU bottleneck problem the team discovered. This should improve performance across mid to high end CPUs. Teams also actively working on DLSS and FSR support, which will arrive in a future patch. 
Oh, wait, wait. Is, is, is this a company that people actually have faith in? <sighs> fixing their game? I, apparently. But, what? man, whoa, it whoa, is whoa, getting whoa. blasted. Whoa. They're just, like, saying it's it's just not playable. Like, the bottleneck is so I mean, bad, it's unplayable on PC. If it's unplayable, it's unplayable. I mean, you know... You yeah, should... but it released! Yeah, yeah, and that is the state of how games release these days. And I am annoyed with it perpetually. $70 <laughs> EA title. 70 on PC. Yep. Jeez. Yeah, mm -hmm. $69.99. you imagine spending $70 on a new game and it doesn't run? That's what we all do all the time anymore. Yeah. <laughs> this is how ga games are released as beta tests. Not me. I'll wait till PlayStation <laughs> PC ports come out five years later and play those. <laughs> Troy had a favorite review, and it's actually one that's quoted in the uh, the news article the PC Gamer wrote, too, about them issuing this fix next oh, week. Oh, I wasn't the only one that picked up on yeah, that. Yeah, it's a PC Gamer put it in their actual article for it. Oh, <laughs> um, the uh, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out where I want to give credit. Uh, here it is. Uh, Katsumi Steam review. The price is higher than the FPS you'll probably pull in this game. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's, that's rough. That's rough. That is rough. We also had the Nintendo Direct this week, though. Uh, well, in since our last show. Uh, had a, a number of uh, announcements there. We're not going to go through the entire show. I do have to say, Ninja dropping... Metroid Prime Remastered was brilliant. Yes. Brilliant. I've been playing it the hell out of good. it. It's so it good. good. It's so good. It was such a great game on the GameCube. It's even better. We're likely, rumors say, to get the Metroid Prime 2 and 3 ports. Those will be more ports than remasters. So, I, yeah, But I well. do think that's an interesting way. Like, Obviously, we all want Metroid Prime 4 news. We have for decades. We also know that that right. project basically got burnt down and started over from scratch. <laughs> That's a nice way to kind of pad the time in between, Troy, is to just like, let's remaster the first one, and then we'll port the second one and the third one, and it'll be two years later, and here's Metroid Prime 4. <laughs> and then here's the new one. Let's go. It's a lot of fun. That, that, that way they have time to burn it down one more time and rebuild. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, now, uh, Troy, I know you're going to be like, odd man out for a few minutes on this chat not yeah. owning a switch not really playing on consoles and nintendo not really doing much on the pc so yad and i will carry this pikmin 4 july 21st <laughs> new oh hero for xenoblade chronicles 3 samba de amigo coming in summer of 2023 hell yes i don't think i've played samba de amigo since the dreamcast <laughs> such a great that, uh... game that rhythm game where yeah. you're telling you. To... Yep. Uh, Dead Cells doing Return to Castlevania in March. Oh, interesting. Why? What do you like about it? The fact that doing, they're doing Return to Castlevania, it just it looked good. It looked like a lot of fun. It looks like classic Castlevania it side really scrolling. Does. It really I does. I mean, it's Castlevania. <laughs> Ghost Trick Phantom Detective being remastered. Splatoon 3 is getting its paid expansion pass. Disney Illusion Island got a new trailer. We'll see that in July. Fire Emblem Engage DLC got its expand uh, its DLC expansion pass detailed. Harmony: The Fall of Reverie as uh, a, a narrative adventure coming up. We Love Katamari is getting a Switch remaster. Hell yes, hell yes, launching in April. Uh, the first three Etrian Odyssey games are being remastered for the Switch. That should be a little interesting because that's the one. Uh, isn't that the one where like you had to basically draw in the map? Uh, mm, I think it was in the in the bottom screen of the DS. Uh, Advance Wars Run Into Reboot. Uh, can't wait. Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe will feature a new epilogue. Game Boy games are coming to Nintendo Switch Online as well as Game Boy Advance. Uh, I already mentioned the Metroid Prime remaster, Bait and Kados uh, 1 and 2 remaster coming. Fantasy Life is getting a sequel. Professor Layton is getting a sequel. Mario Kart 8 is getting its booster course wave. And then, of course, we land on the worst secret kept ever. <laughs> The, the, the game that was in awards before it had a title. <laughs> right. <laughs> Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom gets a brand new trailer. 
I'm showing it here below, which will immediately unmonetize this episode. None of them are monetized anyway. It doesn't matter. But I always do get the flags on this one when I show Nintendo Direct trailers. Uh, and it launching May 12th. May 12th. So we've, we've got like three months to wait. Less than three months at this point um, to wait for this. I cannot wait <laughs> to rip this son of a bitch and play it on my Steam Deck. I mean... Boy, it's gonna the best when he said, I cannot wait. <laughs> I can uh, wait to rip that ROM and put it on my Steam Deck. Uh, of course, it means I'll buy the game, so shut up, Nintendo. Fuck you. Um, you're getting your money. You're getting your money out of me. It looks great, Yod. It looks great. It does. It looks really sweet. This is not here, but he'd be like, no, it's not Zelda. Not. It's not Zelda. Yeah, but you know he's going to buy it and it's going to sit in the package right next to the <laughs> other game. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> It was, a, it was a pretty good... So here's the thing. I saw split opinions on the Nintendo Direct. I saw okay. people saying it delivered everything, and, and the last few have delivered everything that people wanted from Nintendo at the time. Obviously, you, may, you, you maybe wanted Metroid Prime 4 news, but you got some Metroid Prime in there, and right. Zelda fans wanted Zelda. They got Zelda. Like You don't always get what you want out of it. But then I saw the flip side of the opinion that Nintendo just needs to do away with these directs, Troy, because they're just absolutely 100% predictable at this point. Like, we know what's going to be announced. All we're really getting is dates, which they could just do via a press release. I don't know. Are you a fan of, like, Nintendo directs doing things like this? The the Sony showcases, the, you know, the, the Xbox showcases? Like, do you like that type of stuff, whether they're doing it quarterly or semi-annually? Or should they I just do. be like, here's a press release? No, I enjoy that stuff. I enjoy the presentations and stuff. You know, sometimes they're bad and, and sometimes they're pointless, but but more often than not, they're fun to watch and fun to see what's coming up. And you get little tidbits here and there. And, and you know, not everybody coming into these knows what's coming up. They're not all, you know, not everybody's into the leaks and knowing what's going on. And some people get genuinely surprised at this kind of stuff. So I enjoy watching them. Yod, where do you fall on this? I, I, and then the Nintendo I, Direct, I to be fair, is pretty predictable most times. Like it, it may be predictable, but I agree with Troy. Not not everybody follows the press releases and stuff like that. The other thing is, I think it drums up some uh, excitement and some uh, chutzpah for people to go, "Oh my God, did you see that?" He used the word chutzpah. <laughs> yeah, chutzpah. <laughs> you gotta put a, you gotta put a little on that chutzpah. 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 Yeah, chutzpah. All right, some miscellaneous pieces. Super Nintendo World is now open here in the States. And damn, do I want to go. I know, but it's out in freaking California. Yeah, it is. It is. But it's open. Look at it. It is. Look at yeah. this roller coaster. It looks awesome. Mm -hmm. looks awesome. Gigantic know, right? green pipe tunnel to enter the, the kingdom, mm -hmm. of course. Border ride based on the Mario Kart game. Eat at a cafe inspired by Toadstool or other activities. Yep. According to CBS News, the theme park is rich with interactivity, distinctive merchandise, and inventive culinary treats. Uh, that was from Universal Park CEO Mark Woodbury. Uh, yeah, it just looks so cool. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. Look at this one. Here's, here's another picture for you. Kind of like the entryway there. Yeah. Yeah, Baron, I did see that news story, too, that the, the roller coaster does have some uh, more stringent size requirements than other <laughs> roller coasters around the world uh, for uh, people who are a little on the larger side. So, yeah, I saw I saw those uh, headlines, too. Yeah. I was like, ah, I want to go. The, the Mario Kart experience, I, I had saw somebody I follow on Twitter or whatever. Um, they, they said that was absolutely very cool. The, the, is that, is that the one in Japan where you drive Mario Karts around the streets? Uh, I think so. I think so. Yeah. And that, <laughs> that, that's not in the United States one yet. No, no, yeah. that is not. That's also not in the theme park. That's something they do on the streets right. in Japan, which is crazy. <laughs> one day ticket, general admission, Troy. How much do you think it is? Oh man. Uh, $125. Yod, what do you guess? One day gonna, general admission pass, one person. I'm gonna bump that up a little bit and say 150. Well, you'll both be pleasantly surprised. 109. Yeah. Yeah. You'll both be pleasantly surprised. I, on the yeah, other yeah. hand, was like, that is $90 too much. 
<laughs> I mean, I totally agree with you, but <laughs> but that's I mean, also okay. because anywhere I go, it's it's me, the wife, three kids. Right, right. That's exactly. It. <laughs> so when I'm like 109 ahead, how many are you coming? God damn! <laughs> Some of y'all need to stay home. <laughs> Who's gonna stay and take care of the dogs this time? How about all and, three and of then, you? <laughs> and then you gotta take, think about flight and yeah. hotel yeah. and ugh. Yeah. Check this out. So I wish out. it would do it down in Florida, but anyways. Yeah, my wife said that too. Uh, she was like, "Oh, then because I I think her and her parents and and my kids are gonna do their annual thing this summer with them, and I I'm usually at home, and they uh." And they were like, oh, maybe we'll go. And I was like, what do you mean? And they were like, well, we, we we usually stop by Universal. And I was like, yeah, you're in Florida. And she was like, yeah. And I was like, this is in L.A. <laughs> this, is, this is the other one. <laughs> you you other know one. why they do that, right? There, there's a rights issue with theme parks where Universal in Florida still owns the rights to Marvel superheroes. Really? So yeah. I didn't so know that. The Dis- yeah. So the Disney down in, in down at uh, Florida can't have Marvel superheroes. It's in the Universal lots. Oh. But in, out in California, the other side of the Mississippi, they don't hold the rights at Universal anymore. So that's why they have the Avengers Campus at Disney World or Disneyland, and that way the areas that used to be Marvel stuff in Universal can be converted to Mario Land. Really. Hmm. Chat, let me know if he's full of shit, because I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know whether to believe him or not. Like, uh, that sounds like it could be legit, but I, I just, I find it weird. I didn't know that. It is a weird thing that it's, it's something like the rights that they did was this on anything on this side of the Mississippi they have yeah. on this side they don't. It's like, what? Wait, huh? That's weird. Know. You know, it's, but, it's sad that Marvel had to part themselves out the way that they did yeah. before Disney acquired them, but at the same time, that's the only thing that kept them alive until right. the point they got to where Disney acquired them. Right, that's it exactly. Did you see this new commercial for the Mario movie, which I still cannot wait to see this movie? Yes. It's yes, got the old school great. freaking theme song. Yes. I was jamming, bro. It, I the first see- I literally went upstairs and I started throwing in the DVDs cuz I have the DVDs of the Super Mario Brothers Super Show and nice. I was like, yeah, I got to watch them now. I got to watch them. Did, did, did you look up the website though? Uh the yes. Show? Yes. <laughs> but what I didn't do yet was call the number. So I figured, well, oh. let's call the number. <laughs> you want to call it? Let's see. Call it. Let's call the number. Yeah, let's let's do that. Let's call the number nine two nine five five Mario. So let me see now. You you gentlemen won't be able to hear this. So chat, right, right. but chat. Oh yeah, you will. Chat. Uh, let me know. And and Troy and them, you can let me know. Like, can you hear this? Can you hear the dial tone? No, I'm not hearing anything. Right, let me put it on speaker then. Can you hear it now? No, nope, I'm not hearing so. anything. You can't hear this? I can hear that. I hear that now. Okay. So nine two nine five five M A R I O. This is great. That is Charlie Day, too, who's doing the voice yeah. of Luigi. So now we got to yeah, fucking text great. it. Let's see what we get yeah. here. We got to text this number. Great. All right. New text. Keypad. 92955 Mario. <laughs> and we're just going to text the word hi and see what we get. Okay. All right. We have texted them. Oh, I got a okay. link. 
Oh. And it says, "Thank you, thanks for your interest in Super Mario Brothers Plumbing. We're a family-owned and operated business providing <laughs> white glove plumbing too. services to Brooklyn and Queens. Please click the link to sign up and get exclusive updates, service offerings, and more." So let me click the link here and totally give them access to my phone. And, <laughs> and now Nintendo <laughs> hacks me. Uh, so it's asking for me to create, uh, to add contact information to Super Mario Bo Brothers Plumbing by accepting okay. your green community's term of use and consent to receiving recurring messages at the number above. On or behalf, or on behalf of the Super Mario Brothers plumbing via community consent. Yeah, we're not doing that. Uh, that's, that's great. But though. yeah, that, if you that, want to, great. there's a whole little community <laughs> thing. That's yeah, awesome. It is. I didn't think they'd go that far, but that's great. Yeah, and if you like Yad, you said the the website. You went to the yeah, site. The why don't you tell live. people? Yeah, the website's live. Yeah. Why don't you tell people what's there? It, it is. It looks like a standard business website, but the the stock images that you normally see on there are replaced with uh, Mario graphics from the cartoon and stuff where, you know, they're action poses and there's like, you know, the plumbing and, you know, the d special deals you can get for going, you know, using Mario, Mario Brothers services and all that stuff. Family owned and operated, just like the thing says, there's a little video, there's their little van as seen on TV. That's very cool. Like yeah, that's it's, it's, that's uh, a well done marketing campaign. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you got it. You got it, it up there. Yeah. yeah, yeah hold yeah, on. Let me yeah, get yeah, it back to yeah. you. So there's yeah. Testimonials and yeah. Wait, it's... there's an apply now for careers. Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Click it. Click it. Oh, Let's okay. go ahead and get you a job. <laughs> get them all. Oh, give them all your personal soon. info while we're at Oh. I want to work with Mario. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a uh, nice little that's neat. Video presentation. Well yeah. done, well yeah, done. They, they they went they went all in on the sucker. <laughs> it's good. Troy, you looking forward to Starfield? That seems like a Troy game. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm gonna play Starfield. I don't know that I'm like overly hyped for it at the moment because I think it's just gonna be Baron's Fallout in space. I'm and still it'll be broken the first week. <laughs> yeah, anyway. and it's definitely going to be broken the first week anyway. But yeah, I'm, it's one of those that I will pick up. Did you see the the leaked image? Everybody was kind of really, really buzzed Freaking about, about that it. this week. Yeah. yeah, leaked image. And oh, yeah, it was AI generated fake. Uh, moving on. It, it, it looks like it. Yeah. It yeah. I mean, it's one of those images that the more you stare at it, the more you can tell what's wrong with it. Yeah, immediately yeah. looking at it, I was like, "There's no way this is real." Yeah, like, there's just no way. I, I mean, if if any, it, it's got like the eye tracking issues that the old oh. Mass Effect had, and all this shit. And it's like that was how long ago? <laughs> well, I wouldn't put that past Bethesda to still have. Uh, <laughs> <that's true. Right. laughs> there is that. There is that. But... Your face may still be tired. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Saudi Arabia has now become Nintendo's biggest outside investor. We've okay. talked about this before. Saudi Arabia, the kingdom, buying stock in various game companies. Uh, they've actually made multiple purchases this year into Nintendo. Uh, last May, that's when they bought their initial 5.01% stake in Nintendo. In January, they raised that to 6.07%. Earlier this week, they made it 7.08%. Uh, and then they made another buy yesterday to take it to 8.26% of the stock of Nintendo is now owned by Saudi investment groups. Uh, they also own, to put this into perspective, <coughs> three. they own acquired over $3 billion worth of stock in Activision Blizzard, uh, FIFA, uh, publisher Electronic Arts, and Rockstar's parent Take Two to break that down. They hold stock now worth $2.9 billion in Activision Blizzard, $1.7 billion in EA, and $1.2 billion in Take Two, all in an effort to diversify their investments outside of oil. I am also going to do the same thing, Video Game Chronicle, here and remind you that American intelligence agencies still accused the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia of ordering the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi back in 2018. 
Saudi Arabia investment firms also the favorite to buy World Wrestling Entertainment as well. I saw that. Is that true? Like, I'm not a huge WWE follower, but I, I saw the headlines just because yeah, it's general they have pop a, culture. They have a healthy relationship with Saudi Arabia. Oh, I know they do. Does. Like, much yeah. to a lot of people's chagrin and and dismay. You know, the yeah. whole what what is it? The crown crown jewel is that the people yeah, the pay per view that goes yeah. there? But yeah. is that actually going to happen? Like WWE sells, and it's possible it goes to Saudi Arabia as a nation. Well, it's an is an investment group representing yeah, it's the PIF. Uh, across the, yeah, it's the same thing. It's it's more of an investment group than the nation itself. But uh, probably the prince has <laughs> heavy heavy hands in that. Do you think that'll happen but, uh, though? Uh, I think it's probably the odds-on favorite right now. Uh, everything, all serious reporting, is that a nine billion dollar price tag uh, to Saudi Arabia is the the odds-on favorite at the moment. <sighs> Nine billion. Just give me one. Just give one billion. <laughs> Let me borrow a billion. Yeah, you know what? Here, I just, I'll just settle for ten million, right now. Throw me ten million, you'll never see my white ass again. I promise. <laughs> All right, before we wrap it up with games of the week, Yod, let's go to you and movie adaptations that you always throw right. into my damn well, show notes. What do we got this yeah, time? Movie TV, actually. Um, we have a new Resident Evil animated feature. Meet as. Uh, which looks Death like it takes Island. Off from, yeah. yeah, it looks like it takes off from the uh, animated TV show from Netflix previous, last year? Was it last year or the year before? Last year, yeah, yeah. Last year, yeah. That was pretty good. So I have high hopes for this one. It looks so like it... I watched the trailer for this one, and there's a weird thing. Like It looks like you this we see Leon and Jill interacting together. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I bet we don't. I bet we don't. I bet we don't. I bet that this is like a they've got their own two storylines and we're seeing both of them play out. It does look good, but I don't think we're going to get to see Jill and Leon interact. Not not without Capcom expressly allowing it because of what they want to do with other stuff. I think I think we we will see a like a scene where they're in the same frame or the same place. Right. And then they both go into separate directions. Like, like I think it was what the the TV series. He met up with another character at the end of the series for like a split second. They talk and then they leave. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Now the other two are sore pseudo documentary adaptions. Yeah, they're like fictionalized documentaries. Right. Yeah. One for Ted. And one for pinball machines. <laughs> the Tetris one looks badass because I do know it, uh, all of that historical data on right, the right. rights of Tetris and kind of sneaking it out to the Game Boy. Right. And I so want to see this movie now. Yeah, I do too. I absolutely <laughs> do on too. Apple TV. Both of them are on Apple TV, and the, the that's other the thing that makes pinball. me sad. I, I don't do Apple TV. Yeah. It's like the one sub uh, I don't do. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Troy, you do uh, Apple TV. I do not do Apple TV. I oh, do man. I was going to ask if you want to password share with me. Uh, yo, yo, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, Mike. You got me? You got me? Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. okay. I know. I know what we're going to do. Okay. I know yeah, what we're yeah, going to yeah, do. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yay. I'll get to see it. I was like, I am yeah. not. I want to yeah. see this, but I'm not subbing to Apple TV for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, don't, no worries. I got you. What about the yes, Air Jordan the- Originals film? Yes. I, we saw that ad during the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. The, oh, the, I, I want to see that. Too. I do, too. <laughs> Totally yes, not yes. gaming related, but yeah, we yeah we so we during the Super Bowl, uh, my family we play Super Bowl Bingo. We all have like uh, it's an actual thing we bought, not like we sit there and made cards. Uh, okay. But like it's yeah, uh, you know, uh, a com- it, it's a it's Super Bowl commercial bingo. So like if you see a commercial for fast food, then you can cover fast food. Mm-hmm. If you see one for shoes, then you can cover shoes and stuff like that. And um, when that and one of them is movie trailer, and one is shoes. So when that started, we were like, okay, it looks like a movie trailer. So go ahead. If Oh, and by the way, you can only claim one for a commercial. So if it's a movie Aww. trailer for a shoe movie, you can only Aww. take shoe or movie trailer. Unless the commercial gets replayed again later, then you can take the other one. Those are the house rules. Uh, anyway, the trailer started, and we were like, this looks like a movie trailer. So if you want movie trailer, you could take it. And then we were like, this is a farce. Like, this is Nike making fun of a movie trailer to advertise the new Jordans. And we get all the way through it, and we're like, son of a bitch, it was a movie trailer. (laughs) It was was a movie trailer. Who knew? Who knew? Uh, So, yeah, I won this year at TV Commercial Bingo, by the way. I had three bingos during the length of the Super Bowl this year. 
Let's go do our games of the week. that are new here is the way we end every episode of Gaming Gumbo here, with the exception of the last two where we let you recommend games to us. It's where all three of us on the panel are going to recommend the game. Could be a video game, mobile game, board game, card game, whatever the hell we're playing, have played before, or have never played, but think you should check out. And you let us know in the comments when you're chiming in on all of our topics today, which of us gave the best recommendation. I got to mine's real easy. It came out yesterday, played the demo last week. I'm going to play it right after the show today. Final Fantasy, Theater Rhythm, Final Bar Line. It's a rhythm game. It's Final Fantasy. Like, why am I even wearing pants at this point? Go <laughs> ahead, Troy. <laughs> uh, I know usually I recommend board games. I haven't played any board games in a few weeks. So i got to get my friends back up for a game night here soon. Uh, but I have been kicking it old school in the MMO universe with Lord of the Rings Online, uh, a game that I've been enjoying, and Star Trek Online, a game that my friends are also playing strangely enough so i've got you know i've got friends playing star trek online and then i've been kind of journeying by myself in the world of middle earth uh so i definitely recommend both of those old school games nice yod i do fly around in uh star trek online occasionally it's been a while since i logged in there but i have found a um early access game starship troopers extraction extinction i think it is extinction, um, on steam yeah. Yeah, first person or, shooter. No, extermination, extermination. Extermination, extermination. Yeah, I knew it began with the EX, but it's first person shooter. I want to check it out. I haven't had the chance yet, but it looks like fun because you know Starship Troopers. Yeah. Come on now. It's because you can't yet, just so you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's heading into early access this year. It's it's right, not actually right. in early access yet. Right. Oh yes. That's so right. That's right. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Troy or I better win this week, or the audience right. just isn't paying attention. Because you just yes. got recommended a game you can't play. <laughs> <laughs> like you can't possibly play it yet. But I do want. Did you, it is. Did you see the most recent trailer, the one that dropped at the I IGN did. festival yesterday? That I is did. absolute propaganda for bug squashing and is yes. amazing. Yes, it I was want, great. I want to know more. Yeah, <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. I was Troy had already done like his required number of pieces for MMO bomb uh, yesterday, and I was like. Troy, you got to cover this real quick for me. Like, you have to, dude. And he, he watched it and was like, all right, I got it. I got it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I want to yeah. know more. I don't, if you're going to send me an extra one, I don't mind that one. Yeah. 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 Uh, chat, don't go anywhere that's going to do it for the show here today. But for you watching live in Twitch, we do have Torchwick coming up. How are you, Torchwick? I vote for Yod. You vote, wait a minute. No. <laughs> Yod cannot win <laughs> game of the week with a game that is impossible to play. Come on. That is, mm. I know what's going to happen in the freaking YouTube comments now. <laughs> I can. The revolution has started. What are you Starship playing Troopers. today? And it's not Starship Troopers Extermination, that's for sure. Well, yeah, that one's not older than I am. That's true, too, yeah. Uh, the movie might be, though. I don't know. Anyway, Final Fantasy Tactics. I got sidetracked. You still aren't done? It's a long game, and I'm bad at it. It's not that long, dude. You've been playing it for like seven I'm months. I'm not bad at it. <laughs> Look, I, 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 I didn't try to hide that. I put that with the main premise. It's long, <laughs> and I'm bad at it. <laughs> That's so going to be in the tweet. Quote, it's long, and I'm bad at it. Torchwick in Final Fantasy Tactics. Join us now. <laughs> Don't go anywhere, chat. We'll need just a minute or two to relabel everything, get Torchwick live. We'll, of course, be back next week with both the Relic Grind on Thursday and Gaming Gumbo here on Saturday. Until then, Yod, where can everybody find you? Yod Artworks on Twitter, Yod Artworks on Facebook, and right here on Gaming Gumbo. Troy. Everywhere you can social, you can find Noob Fridge. I'm Mike Byrne. You can follow me right there at Magic Man One, but more importantly, follow at M MMO Bomb. I mean, yeah, follow it, but follow at RC Radio so you'll know when this channel goes live. Stay safe. We'll see you on the servers. Why not both? It's free.